Doctors at Chandler Regional Medical and Valley Wise Health say the heat wave is sending more people to ERs in the valley. We've definitely seen an increased number of heat exhaustion or heat stroke. About, you know, give or take 20% of people that have come in have had some sort of heat related illness. Once temps reach 90 degrees or higher, ER rooms are prepared to cool patients walking in in serious condition fast. With the use of ice, with the use of powerful fans, with the use of IV fluids that are cold, with the use of air that's cold. We also have these little pools that we use, okay, relatively new, and the pools are think of like a little kiddie pool, but it's kind of rectangular, that we fill up with ice and we, and we put patients in. But high body temps aren't the only problem with heat waves. When it's 100 degrees out, the pavement is usually like 160 degrees. We're told burns received after people faint or trip and fall on hot asphalt can not only be painful, but doctors say they can also be deadly. The temperatures are so high that within minutes, people can start to sustain first, second degree burns. Um, and they can be very extensive, requiring eventually burn grafts and other treatment as well, depending on the severity of them. To better stay safe, it comes down to hydration. We're told if you go outside and feel thirsty, you're already behind. People say that you should drink, you know, one 12 ounce glass of water every hour. You know, that's the rest of the world. That's the rest of the world with normal temperatures or average temperatures. You really have to drink about eight ounces of water every 15 minutes just to keep up with the losses. And that's assuming you're not doing any sort of exertional work as well. Now, Dr. Lavecchio with Valley Wise Medical says that he's already seen about 12 to 15 body burns in the last week. So he also advises people that take allergy, high blood pressure or antidepressants to stay extra hydrated. He says some of those medications can affect your sweating, which doesn't help you cool down. So stay extra hydrated and stay in the shade if possible. Boy, Casey, uh, eight ounces of water every 15 minutes. That's an eye-opening stat. Right. Uh, also, of course, there's folks who have to work outside. We're talking about people like construction workers, mechanics. What can they do to stay cool? Well, Dr. Lecchio says that it's good if they can take breaks every 15 minutes inside or in the shade, and also that wearing less clothes is not always better. He says it's very important to try to cover up as much skin as possible. So he says even long sleeves are good as long as they're lightweight and definitely recommends those wide brimmed hats to try to again beat that heat exposure on your skin. Now he also says that if you do start feeling a little bit more weak or tired that you can wear a wet your clothing and wear that outside too that precipitation helps cool you down or maybe you can even mist it with a spray as well with some water and any fan of any size really can help i've been using this one it's about 103 degrees right now and i did start sweating so this is making a big difference uh, any fan helps yeah any little bit helps casey torres reporting thank you casey and you still look great